So I'm in the Hugo, Hugo's Away platform. And I got the year old dollar up here, and I got a, a trusty four hour chart. And uh, I'm just going to go with classic trend lines on closing prices. And I have the Williams Fractal on to show the <laughs> severe turnarounds. Um, I guess they could be pivots. I always wonder what people mean by pivot points, but uh, I suppose it means you're turning around. But if you're milling around and making dojis, to me those are like pivot clusters, and you're still pivoting, but you're really not going anywhere. So you're still doing this, this, the swivel, but you're really not getting anywhere. And is it worth it to trade these little micro moves? So this broker is giving you a two pip spread essentially and it floats between maybe a, a pip if you're lucky to in a bad um, Asian session maybe it goes to th three pips at worst and when the news comes out because the spread gets really big on a floating spread broker just before the uh, news comes out that's when they take people out of these trades where they're running 20 pip stops and all of a sudden, uh, the spread is so wide. Same thing if you're short, they're going to take you out because you're just too tight now. So the really annoying thing about the market is the the fact that everybody knows this news is coming out. And uh, there's kind of a, uh, not a violent, so before the news, it's quiet. And then it's crazy. So, or or sometimes it's quiet after the news. Today is supposed to be the big NFP jobs reporting. Now the euro was already pounded into the ground, so it really was it was already there. So I don't really put too much importance on the news. Now, if you if you, I suppose you should never be trading big enough where even the news is going to affect you. If you're a really conservative trader, you would just. I'm sure there's news on some of these insane moves here on the chart, but like. If you're seriously going to trade support and resistance, in the end, it doesn't matter what the news is because it may be the catalyst. Uh, people say the news is sparking the tipping point and the market just spills into these zones. I, the way I see it, because once you've exhausted a zone, like how long can you keep up? And of course, people have done this in music. They keep the same fucking format. Now, some bands you may love them to death, but you go, dude, that's them. There's, they don't even fucking have, like, they keep it steady. Whereas other bands are fucking pure chaos. There's no consistency, uh, but they're making money. Um, in other words, like a band like Santana, they change the members in that thing so often that it's really an institution. You think Santana, you're like, well, what during what period? But if you think of the Beatles, you're like, dude, yeah, like there's only four guys in the band. It's always been like that. Now, Rolling Stones has people dropping and out, but, you know, the markets just are kind of like, I guess people are looking for the market where it's like the Beatles and it's the eighth album and we can trust them and what a trend these guys are on. They're really getting good at this. And, uh, you know, uh, of course, you know, Phil Spector, out of his fucking mind, curly hair guy comes in there and puts all those violins and shit on and, and let it let it bleed but you know what are you gonna do so he's out of his fucking mind kills <laughs> kills the uh girlfriend with shoots her in the mouth yeah it's a hot date so the world's when that story came i watched the whole trial of that i couldn't believe it <laughs> I, couldn't be, I just couldn't believe stuff you see and so i guess the president being out of his fucking mind doesn't but the markets still seem to care in a way you know I'm going to see if my Bitcoin prediction was right. I haven't looked at Bitcoin since uh, I, I said I'm just going to get the fuck out. So if I'm long Bitcoin in my mind's eye, I'm just getting the fuck out here. So I also sold the dollar yen into the close because I looked at it and you can make these supposed correlations. You know, the, the euro dollar is retracing and um, well, there was a point there where the dollar was selling up. But now the dollar goes berserk against the yen and I suppose there's some type of imbalance there. I don't know what's going on in those countries, and I really don't have, I don't have to know. I guess people want to say, like this oil trader that we talked to in Russia, 
Well, I understand um, shock economics and the big picture and the fundamentals, and that's great. And I think that you can trade like that. But what I'm saying is that I, I just think that the price is an expression of all the hopes and fears, of course, the fears being the sell-offs, the hopes being it goes up if you're an investor. But when you're in commodities, fun, it, the funny thing is you really don't have a long and short bias, which I found very disturbing because uh, the idea of selling something that you don't own was so ridiculous that I really couldn't accept that. So I had a hard time shorting things. And I just thought, well, even though same margin requirement and stuff, and I just thought, oh, I don't know. I like to see it go up, you know. I'm kind of optimistic person. So that is a big problem. So I usually like to buy shit. And then when I wrote the scripts, I thought, well, it's easier to write buy scripts because if you just buy right by everything, you know exactly what it's going to look like to catch a falling knife. The sell side... I feel like it's stopping a hot air balloon, but I that now you got to change all the math. You got to change all the words. It's a lot of work. If you just got done writing this complicated um, interwoven grid, interlaced grid of kind of randomish entry points in a given pip range, as opposed to a linear grid, which may be. Well, series of linear grids. So if you said, oh, I'm going to buy a 10 pip window here, down here for eight hours, and this is going to be a scalp, see? And I'm going to get out of seven pips, uh, 10 pip risk on that. And that'd be like your worst, right? And then you work up from there. Okay, seven to make seven, seven to make 10, seven to make 12, seven to make 14, seven to make eight. Put them in even numbers. Now, the, laying all these tickets in um, for a given market that you think, like right now, Bitcoin. If I wanted to sell this, because I'm really a range trader in the end, it doesn't matter what the market's doing, because I can see this as a, oh, it could go, Bitcoin could go up a little bit more. Let's just start selling here at the market. We'll sell one, and we'll just layer in progressively. So the higher it goes, the more we sell, either per ticket basis or more tickets compressed into a tighter zone and just let it go because it's the only way to logically sell into a rally is to just go okay it's overbought now well it's overbought hit the sell button joe because it's 12 o'clock yeah no shit now that robot comes in but that has to be the most simple like every week it's up sell okay until so you blow up your account. Well, how much is in your account? 500 bucks. We'll just fucking do it then. And I'm going to tell you what. That if you did that, say on Bitcoin right now, you came in and you sold 10. I don't know what what the margin requirement on Bitcoin is. But you sold it with a um, the smallest amount of Bitcoin you can smell, <laughs> smell. Sell. I don't know what the, let's just say we did put a stop on it. So 20 bucks per stop. I don't know if that, what that is, but a uh, $500 account. All right, well, you might get stopped out of that, but the target for that has to be 10 or 20 or 30 or 40 if you're going to go for these fucking gargantuan, greedy targets. So I just wanted to make eight. Check it out. Yeah, I know you got stopped out five times, dude. You got stopped out. Well, I made it back, so I made three to one ratio. I don't know if I really want to go through all that fucking heartache and commissions. I'd rather hold on to a giant swing trade small micro loser. So I'd rather do that and go, you know what? You just got to be able to accept that. That is not power scalping. That isn't sniper. I get, that's not getting in an 85K for 40 seconds and making a hundred dollars it's not that trade or that robot but that is that is still trading you know and even if it's a three-day hold i think you're a trader now an investor my mind is like you never sell unless it's the end of the world i guess I mean, do you hear about these investors? Well, I'm thinking about getting on the stock market. Like anybody that said that, and of course, I would definitely be peeling out of that because sector rotations are probably just going to get wider because there's more sectors now. If you consider this Bitcoin, which is kind of representation of, I always wonder if it's fear driven because it looks like what gold, gold's supposed to respond to fear. So if something really went dramatically wrong in a, 
in an optical way like like for all the fraud that there is yeah there's people that are gi giving um nobody cares right and i suppose it's the same with the market so if you tell anybody about bitcoin they'd be like yeah let's fuck buy bitcoin i don't know if i'd buy it right here but of course you could go ahead and do that but since i'm thinking oof this looks like it's really um up <laughs> And I, I missed the entry. I'm a, I should have bought it 30, you know. Um, and then the dilemma is taking profits is harder because it's like, oh, shit, you know. It went up further. I got out too early. That can be more painful than getting stopped out because you figure, well, yeah, I got a tight stop. They'll probably stop me out. But uh, the, the horror of finding out that you're way up on the trade and you're like, oof, um, wow, I've never been so up on a trade. Uh, maybe I should get out. Should I stick to my guns on the take profit as well as I do on the stops? So I put tight stops in one time and I thought, well, because I do run, run wide stops because part of my um, entry is that if the market's dropping 100 pips per day, then... This could be a great swing trade, but this, the rate of change is too fast. So I'll let them stop me out of a, a 15, 20 pip stop. And then the account went flat. The account this one time I put in just the most insane. It was a cent account. So I was able to put in $300 clusters. And once it got stopped out, there was still money in the account and it literally came into another fresh bank of tickets so i wasn't holding on to a 50 pip stop and a 40 pip stop because i if i see a market drop i just i can't resist like i sold the dollar yen on close i mean it's uh, ridiculous i don't know what to me this is as trapped as bitcoin look at this weekly i don't, I don't even know where the fucker's going like do you see it says so a big giant but it's gonna it's gonna give up the ghost at some point here so i sold a little bit here but i would sell more when i come into next week because i'm like that's a little ridiculous like the volatility is really up let's just scalp it for 50 pips yeah maybe it goes up another 10 20 okay i i can handle it like so i'm okay taking some hits you know light hits and they're psychological because subconsciously, every time I'm down on any trade, I think, well, yeah, you're not making money. So my, my subconscious is like, to, or, you know, the, the uh, hot girl on my shoulder says, yeah, you know, uh, this isn't working. Is it? You said, I thought you said you're hot. Oh, yeah, well, look at this thing banging on this 100 pip. Although it overshoots a little bit. It's banging on the 100 daily daily dollar yen i'm like what the fuck are they doing over there in japan that's so naughty that they have to the dollar is tr supposed to be like this piece of shit currency well apparently not to the the yen the yen the yen people think it's amazing they can't get enough dollar look at this thing comes screaming off the floor here dude yeah so this is a real oof but like i said this is a market that keeps pounding north but really like come on um so i would just estimate that sure we go up another 50 pips i guarantee you all the way up there i would just lay the elements in and just go well whatever happens yeah i can't stop it i can't make it I, the trick is to have the scalps interlaced so that yeah if it does a if it does a 40 pip move or a 20 pip move you're gonna risk uh, 10 to make 30 10 to make 40, 10 to make 20, uh, 13 to make 18. As long as it's diversified, then you don't have hard profits or hard losses. You don't really see. Uh, and they're, so these are 200 trade plans with a, a timer, expiration timer built in. So, at some point, you're going to want to launch like 12-hour and orders that last all day if you don't think you'd be able to get back to the platform for 12 hours because 
it's not going to change the fact that that is the best fucking price in the world. Like, this is the one-hour chart. So on the one-hour chart here, now here it's uh, it's so dramatically obvious, and you can count out the hours. If you drop a cluster of tickets in this zone, so you just look um, each day. So here's Asia. Uh, I, I'm just talking about pure limits now, but we can throw the market orders, and there won't be very many market orders. I can tell you that's not, well, for me, it's just the word. I'm never good at trading at the market. Um, I mean, I have no problem pulling the trigger, but these are usually not um, the thought-out price. Since this is Asia here, and this is that quiet. Now, it is true that if you put a buy stop here and a sell stop here that you got picked up on the long side by default and you're a genius, right? But you really kind of want to think about anything above here should be seller's delight. If some guy's got, um, I got a five pip grid here. So every five pips you put on, you put a 1K, a 2K, a 3K, a 4K up to the round and beyond and you drop it here and it lasts all week because this is a day from here to here so you see this high and you're like you know what if we ever come back to this i want to start selling so if you got in here in the breakout you gotta see where the seller's window is starts right well this guy sells on a five pip grid he martingales in a 1k 2k 3k 4k gets filled on the very top tick tommy he comes back. He could cash out the whole thing and maybe take five pips on this one. Cash out these four. Right? And this one's Martingale, so this one, this would be scaling and a hard dump at the breakout points. You hard dump everything that you gathered here, and you're out, and it's clean. And maybe you leave a little follow-through tickets, but then you're going to wish you had the whole fucking thing on there. But that's okay, because you know that below this congestion uh, drift this little pocket here you you know from looking at uh, congestion which is anytime in Asia this box so coming into Asia and on the way out for four hours here there's nothing really going on now this is the the this is the uh, the place that will have a fake breakout possibly but not always so what do you do because look at this is a fake they just keep chopping the shit it just ne and then it, and then it it tanks because uh the volatility is picking up it's that uh what that funnel pattern i think they call it expanding funnel pattern i'm like God, people got uh, something for everything don't they that's the expanding funnel pattern. It's like this or something. The megaphone pattern. Dude, I've seen all, I've, I've read it all. I'm like, oh, a megaphone? Well, let me get my brain around this first. Wait, so you mean like the old, like a megaphone analog? Like just a tube? Like a cone, man. Yeah, like a cone. Oh, okay. Well, I'll look for that more often. Is this one? I mean, you, you lose your mind. So... I think you got to keep it simple here. Like, here's four hours of nothing. I could get the thing to set it up like that. So you probably get an indicator just to highlight this four hours of nothing going on. So this is a classic. Now this breakout's clean. It takes a run. Everything's golden. This one, nah, you got chopped to death. It, Trapped you this way, trapped you that way, bing, bang, bong, bing, bing, bang, bong. It just blew up. Any any breakout bot just lost its mind. Well, if he just took the Asian breakout, I guess he's okay. You know, uh, with wide enough stops, of course, you know. You know that with wide enough stops that it, it survived this sell-off and it made money because it, it held to here. But you don't know that because the the breakout bot reinitialize itself every time it sees Asia, which is four hours of nothing. So this is the four hour of nothing rule. <laughs> Asian sessions, Chris, this is, I, my, my, my is too big. 
you're stalled out. Now, this is where you get that follow through. So it's a bullish day, close here. All right, you know what? Still got some bulls left. Break out, pull back, but you know what? Yeah, it's getting, plus we're up in the seller's window. I'm sure if you look back on the left and then all this um, perfect Gartley Batwing vacuum has been stacking and whoosh, bye bye. And it took the smooth sell off. Just beautiful. Beautiful smooth. That's how these that's how these Asian people roll. Just look at that nice graceful now just like every fucking hour sell off. Bye bye. And then uh if your buy limits start at the bottom of Asia, I think that's a key. That's a key. See, that's the, there's a trick to this. But you know, it's changing every day. The problem is that you may not have a script with a 20 to make 50 pips, and you need it right there. You really kind of have to go with the uh, instrument you're trading because they all have their unique. Um, like in the, in the guppy, this might be a 300 pip sell off. And of course, the spread's wider to reflect that kind of crazy stuff. Or maybe you had sell grid up here just like that. So you had it martingaled into that. But if you're not in this trade right now, like um, here, I think if you don't mind placing the tickets, you just put buy limits in here. I'll buy here. I'll buy here. I'll buy. Yeah, I'd buy. I'd buy just started off is the most basic trade. Just put a linear grid in here. I'm just like, yeah, every five pips, I'm going to order the last for 12 hours next week uh, coming. Or every day. Every day I drop a grid. And I could actually launch that script and just run it regardless, irregardless of the market behavior. But when the market goes into a, oh, how often does it drop, too? If it just drops it once a day, and you're just putting, this is the most conservative, every day it just drops a grid. Yeah, you know what? It might blow that bank out. And maybe you got a master stop down here connected to all these buy limits. Or, um, you only get filled in the first two tickets. It comes down, it fills them, you're like, okay, well, I filled a 2K. Well, big deal. So the trick is to say, on this one-hour chart, if, I'm, if I see this, I don't care where we are on this chart. So the, right now, I got sell limits pending above because it's, it's the most ridiculous. It, it's like a, max, a vaccine mandate. This shit blows up. These people are going to blow themselves up because you're out of your fucking mind. And what's hard about trading when you see how these prices are bullshit, the herd, the, the mob that's driving the prices doesn't feel that way. Sure, you can see how. Well, how do you land that plane that you created this fucking bullshit? flew airplane okay you you built okay so you built it in a lab so what mother nature has a lab <laughs> i mean I, is everything that's deadly man made what the fuck it's probably tamer than at least you know how you built it at least people are monkey they, they're so fucking hilarious Hey, we found this, this this spaceship landed. It looks like a, what are these, diesel engines? Never heard of that. You know, can you imagine, right? What does this thing run on again? Sunlight? Oh, what we'll do is we'll mandate fucking... That's right. <laughs> Sex toys that run on solar. Well, that's going to be tough. I like it dark in my room. Well, we've got these lights we can sell you. Oh, how much? People really think they're saving something? A, a virtual signal, because I have a car that runs on love. But I have to kill people. You know, it's like a horror flick. i got to kill people to fuel it. It's crazy. I mean, what the fuck? So that's what I feel when I look at this chart. These people fucking nuts. You love the price, you hate the price, it's up, it's down, it's bad. What the fuck? Stop it. So, 
I feel for the yen getting its ass kicked by the dollar, and I just want to step in front of the market and go, okay, let's go. Let's just throw the tickets out there. I'm, so, I'm not going to sit there and fucking wait for some stupid fucking triangle megaphone pattern. And besides, when people come up with this shit, I'm like, oh, so if I see a megaphone, do you remember five years ago when this fuck nut that sells silver and gold coins so you could die? I can't remember his name. It starts with an M. Mix something. And I'm like, dude, really? And he was the, well, the golden cross, which is 100 period moving average crosses the 50. That's the death cross. Now, if you Googled that, you can only find three people talking about that. But I heard about it in a book somewhere. And I'm like, do you really think that this fucking pattern right fucking now is showing up in this fucking market? I mean, sorry to swear, but you got to be kidding me, man. It's like telling me that um, if I wear a mask, somehow I'll be healthier. <laughs> you kidding me? Well, yeah, you know, here's another thing. That car you got in the garage, if you don't drive it, you're never going to crack it. I never thought of that. Shit, honey. Park the car. Give me the keys. Fucking hey, listen to this guy. Listen to this guy. He knows what he's talking about. If you don't drive the car, you ain't gonna wreck it. Fuck. We don't, need, don't even need insurance now. It's guaranteed. Are you fucking kidding me? I want to take this Fauci fuck. Take him outside and do. Or, remember Biden said, "We'll take him behind the, the in the woodshed." I'm gonna like, hear this fucking Fauci fuck. He needs electrodes on his private parts he needs he needs to be treated like a lab rat he really needs to we need to have punishments that are like a like a night gallery kind of uh, twilight zone kind of moral punchlines to him no it's not going to be solitary confinement for this guy we have him on a constant random sirens and electrode straight jackets but yeah, it's it's just, I can't take it no more. But no, I think I'm numb. Everybody's numb to it. They're like, yeah, what else? I mean, when when Mickey Minaj is like, what the fuck? Yeah, um, no shit. You, you fucking, you, you finally, uh, you finally acknowledge reality. What are you fucking nuts? But no, people just have to go broke. I just, uh, I love it though. This reminds me of, um, when uh, a drunk guy gets a hold of like uh your new car you know oh this isn't gonna end well mm, his his poll numbers are gonna go down nobody's gonna like this oh but geez man i could hear him driving the people are still driving their motorcycles tonight it's still summer it's still warm out we just need some more shootings you know we got we gotta thin the herd and uh Listen, every day is an IQ test, but trading seems easier than trying to figure out the next political stunt. And of course, um, it's funny how stuff will be down to one vote or two votes because people collude on the sidelines knowing the final score to say, well, this is our one, this guy is the one guy we're just going to fucking... Uh, this is the pivot point. This one guy, you know, 500 people on one side, 501 people on the other side. I figured the markets are like that. The tipping point I always felt like when the market does a breakout, it's like, well, the path of least resistance is the other way of uh, describing this void that we fall into. We spill into these zones. But it's pretty fascinating because the the trading technique of putting in the grid entering on limits with the fact that sure if it's down 100 pips and i was going to go through this chart i was trying to go through every chart and say let me just if your scanner was as crude as to say show me a market that's down 100 pips in one day and let me start to buy into that uh, move go against that move by uh, 
look, I'm not going to chase it, even though that might be the winning trade, unfortunately. But like I said, I'm going to stick with the technique because that's the trade plan. So my trade plans are, are just um, building blocks of um, simple yes and no questions because they're, I'm not going to say, well, RSI is above 80, so let's sell because we were in a down 100 period moving average down. Now, I, I get the idea that people want to aim at this uh, approach, but the problem there is you have a filter. It's as if you built a car that can only drive on a 30-foot wide road. It takes up two lanes. Okay, well, how you can't drive on a lot of roads like that, but imagine the lanes go from half a car wide to 40 cars like your cars are changing sizes and the roads are changing sizes well what do you do now so the market because of the volatility coming and going well how do you how do you even adapt to that right well people would say you need a adaptive moving average so you can well you can just use the one period moving average i mean there's nothing more adaptive than reality like each frame frame by frame but then you have these call them structures because uh, uh, the high and low gives you this vertical dimension. And I suppose your perception of getting filled on buy limits here, if I just laid them in right now in this one hour chart, I'm like, okay, you know what? Let's, um, let's take this is my entry. I'm not going to put a linear grid in. I'm going to start buying like just a pocket in here. So I was talking about the account that went flat. So if you have a pocket of tickets here, but you you got a hard stop here. If this trade plan, if you scalp some of that and you just want to get out here, you're like, you know what? Let's just, let's take that. But if it blows out this stop and then the market goes flat, I mean, your account goes flat, you're not using any margin, then you start to buy here. And uh, so let's say this rack here has a soft stop just because you want to diversify. And then from here down, all week long, I would have a constant buy limit grid in here, maybe just on the platform, just to remind me that instead of putting in lines, just put tickets in there. So you'll be, when you look at your phone or when you when when you hear um, I don't know if you could set a sound for the f getting filled on a ticket like Bing. There's probably an app that'll a plug in that would maybe ring a bell if you got filled. I know that they used to, uh, um. FXCM used to do that. That was my first broker, FXCM. And they had their own platform. Bing! So I started trading on limits there, and I thought, yeah, that's the way to go because, um, wow, well, I can wake up. Look at I can start looking. And maybe I get into the market after that. So it kind of triggers the zone here. I know if the market does drop, which is pretty inconceivable, right, in the next 10 minutes. So what is the probability, if I put a, a buy limit here, and it expires in, this is a one hour chart, so if it's got an eight hour expiration, this is about eight hours. He just kind of barely filled that. Now, if I put a one day, 24 hour expiration, or 12 hour expiration, and I put a buy rack in here, I got filled. But this was riskier because I exposed myself to a longer amount of my auction lasts longer, right? So I got eBay auction. Um, good till canceled, which is the most dangerous in a, in a sense because if I put buy limits here at Bama Asia and they last all day, um, if they last 12 hours, they actually do not get filled, but they last all day, they will, but in certain situations, I'm sure you can see how if here you put sell limits in starting here and they lasted all day, you are, unless you took profits on that pullback, you're still selling that and you're just getting clobbered, right? If you have not taken anything off the table and you got in on this giant move, 
Now let's hope that you weren't so greedy. Well, you went such a swing trader that you are not even, you're trying to make 300 pips with this with a 300 pip stop. You're going to sell every five pips with a 300 pip stop to make 300 pips. So your target's down here, right? This is your mindful warrior trade, which I don't know how she finds the patience for that trade. I guess she just doesn't care enough to look at the market and go, I'm not, cha I'm not trading a big enough size to give a fuck. And besides, I'm trying to be consistent. I'm like, you're kidding. Well, I consistently wear my mask. Okay, but I didn't, I never liked that consistency. I am consistently out of my fucking mind. How's that? Now shut up and go back to your um, building your uh, holy grail. No nonsense. Algorithms. But, you know, this morning, waiting for the Euro dollar rally, I was like, I don't have the patience for this shit now, but I, I had to buy more. I had to, I had to go with what was going on. So in the, the dollar yen, if you had the feeling or the thought that this is going to go up like this, you know, and you thought, well, if that's true, then when is it going to start happening? And this is the pressure of the impatience. You're like, okay, well, are we going to make a run? Well, that was an attempt. Pulls back. Let me buy some more. No, this time we're going to really break out. Really, no, real, really, really, no, we, we just, just look at this giant itching vacuum. And of course, this you're only making ten pips, by the way. Here, and hopefully, you bought this on limits or when it sold off. If you're a real bull, you're actually buying these dips. Let's hope you're not putting buy stops here and getting trapped every time it makes an attempt at the border. But then here comes um, just before Europe opens. This is about uh, two o'clock in the morning here, and then you know if you. Uh, have buy limits because of Asia that's why you put them in you're getting filled on those if they lasted more than 12 hours you are in that trade now maybe you're not even big enough now now you feel like I really should put more tickets in here like this is a great place to get in this is crazy or you are you're holding because you're like you see how they're banging on this thing but you're kind of underwater well are you willing to buy more down here it's pretty tough yeah but i'm not even fucking up on this trade you want me to buy more this is the hardest thing because that's where all the money is the money is in the in the trade that's really difficult because you're going against you're adding to a loser you are just adding to a fucking loser. Now this is a day of. I guess this is like a. Opened here. It didn't really go far. But man look at this drama. And maybe it did take 10 or 15 pips off the table here. And that is the thing to do. Because. You don't know how long it's going to take to break that shit out. You should be making money every two hours on something. Unless you really are going to buy every dip and say, I think we're going to take out this. We're going to take out previous day's high. Let's accumulate here when it's just going nowhere. And maybe you actually have a stop here that never got hit. You're like, oh, I'll put a stop here. Let's just start pulling the trigger, man. Just Let's keep buying this. Now, if you don't take one ticket off the table and you commit to accumulating every hour drop in here, I'm just building a position. This isn't a 618 pullback. This is, this is just bullshit, man. You know, the 618 is cute because really you should be able to do it for every bar. Well, 618 of this one bar. Okay, it, look at that 618 pullback. It did come back there. One bar, look back. Here, take this bar, come 618. Oh, look at that. One bar, one bar, one bar, one candlestick roll. Big bar here. What's by the, and that wasn't a 618 pullback. This is your reference for your fib tool. Here you go. None of this bullshit. Like, well, here's my fib tool. It's up here. It's like that. It's like that. It's like that. 
Really? Why the fuck are you way out? Well, you see, you got a long range target. How do you afford to ride this bullshit without taking, like, man, this is premium fucking sell off down too fast to be sustainable. All it's doing is coming all the way back and nailing, I suppose, the top of this clusterfuck breakout you've been waiting your whole life for. So these three fractals become the almost a perfect top bottom in a 10 pip window and of course this would be the sellers are just at some point they got to take profits and they're like yeah you know it is kind of like overshot it's completely ridiculous so the ridiculousness um also this big up rally so i think i didn't go short here but i went short here so just before the close i go i'm just going to start selling now because next week i'm going to sell more but only because i don't see a buying opportunity right now <laughs> like i don't know i guess no i could do both i could put buy limits down here and in fact if I'm short here and I get out there, I'm buying it back. So what's the difference? It's just how big you're in the market. So if you are flat the market, it's different. If you go into the weekend, like I went short into this thing, I'm already thinking that we're going to keep going up. And I'm willing to go underwater on 5 or 10K knowing I've got 50, 100, 400K way up in there which is, I suppose it's like a prepper thought, right? You, you're going you're gonna to count on the end of the world. And the other key factor here is that if I keep placing eight-hour elements in, I know exactly what the rate of change is. Needs to be to fill that whole rack. If I place a cell limit, 80 pips above me for eight hours the market has to move at 10 pips per hour or it just moves um, 80 pips in one hour but no less than so it may have a spurt <laughs> but at the end of eight hours regardless of how many times it pauses so if you project uh, that 80 pips like this straight up and you go well if I if I layer them like this and the market comes up market's got to be moving it's got to start hitting the 80 or maybe you have a grid that starts from 80 to 120 pips so if you you just plot it out now you don't know if it's gonna fill or not fill uh, you, you know, you may overfill, blow the whole rank out, rack out. So I suppose that is the the skill is to estimate the next price level coming, which is completely different than momentum trading, which would be this thing is down in the last hour. It's down 50 pips. Well, let me sell uh, with a wide stop based or maybe it's 100 pips stopped because it's down 50 but that's just so that you know for me that's the trade because i need to satisfy my taking advantage of an opportunity even if it's in a 1k so that's how i open up the my mind to the it's okay to buy this it's okay to lose it's okay to put in a 10 out you know risk 10 bucks on this 1k or or just get stopped out and lose three bucks right so when i look at it that's my starting point and then i'm always amazed like i would be here on the yen now when this thing went rocketing up if you stepped in front of it too aggressively saying well i'll just sell new highs without being aware of this top that try to reserve your selling for everything above that because if you start selling the tops of this sure there's probably a scalp in there because we know it came back to here after it was here but that's only 10 pips 
and you could have sold this, but you just got if you sold that. You got to be able to take a hundred pips of punishment there with some kind of 50, 75 pips stop to make 50 or 75 pips to justify selling a range that big up into the. It's just up into nowhere, man. No, no man's land, really. But I think this is probably um, a two year high in the dollar versus the yen. Of course, this does not big news, I'm sure it is in the dollar yen forums, but. I remember the 52-week high. I think they still have this bullshit in the stock market. Oh, 52-week high. And people really pay attention to these old new highs. Uh, 52 weeks, I found out, was a year. <laughs> but the yearly high. But that is, um, you know, there's so many inside bars. It's a bottomless pit of, like, patterns. I can understand why people are torn. But would I use still cast X or RSI, which is better? Is that part of the dirty dozen or should I? I mean, these are really not the right questions because I guess the, the, the awful question is why are you trading in the first place? Do you like the, the do you like computers so much or do you like um, interacting with using your money to try to make money in the market or are you just fascinated by price behavior or maybe you fell in love with garly patterns you know and you think it's like oh there's something here and people even plot like this astrological stuff so you know there's like you know, a lot of side issues for me the computer was certainly the attraction uh, because uh, god if i could trade with a computer because then i want to read a ticker tape and get paper cuts and write scribble down and I'd see people trading like you know writing down the price last hour was I'm like oh my god really you just look at a quote monitor there's a thing called quote track quote track it's a mobile this is a big deal back in the day 30 years ago I got a quote track it's got a readout see and I got the prices right here the bond market you want to know it's like 80 bucks a month you know it was uh, maybe an FM signal I don't know I thought, wow, how can you just look at a quote and know what the fuck to do? I got to see the graphics, so the visual appeal and patterns, of course. And, oh, this should be easy. Look at these fucking patterns. Now, realizing that this is like a $1,000 pattern. If you try to take this entry in the triangle, you put a stop at the base of the the widest part of the triangle before the little tiny apex entry, which is supposed to be your perfect uh, optimal trade entry how many times do i got to do this trade and how many markets have this pattern and am i in the triangle now or am i going to get like is the market going to trick me and do a fake breakout come back like this bullshit here how many times have you said i could i could blow up anybody's uh strat strategy that's why i think strategy is kind of funny this phrase but i think it's more technique so strategy makes it sound like um you found this one strategy and this is it where if you have tactics in a toolbox and you have more of a um approach objective approach right so you can say well how much does it cost to put the trade on what's is the cost of this job so if it's going to be 10 percent if i trade with a 10 pip stop and i have a one pip spread it's 10 percent the cost of that trade so that's kind of like why the markets are it's hard to make 7 15 20 pips all the time because the cost of doing business if the spread is in asia is it five and you're trying to make eight pips well fuck i mean so if you put a, th a three pip stop with a two pip spread you just put a one pip stop in if you if you write a script that says buy at the market with a 10 pip stop and the spread is five that's a five pip stop and of course you don't really see it if you don't have um, the platform doesn't come by default with the 
ask price turned on so these are all selling prices here all bid and that's the other deception because um, people want to trade with tight stops but you're being ridiculous especially in Asia right tight stop in the guppy in Asia on a, on a particular broker hmm. You won't be able to hold on to that trade for even um, half hour. I don't even I don't even know. I'd be constantly getting kicked out. But I'm 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 saving money. I'm risking less money. Well, just put a fucking hundred pip stop. I'd suggest if you're gonna buy. If you're you're gonna buy anything any time of day and you're really you're just about to buy at the market you think it's that good a price put a buy limit in 10 pips deep and see if maybe in the next 15 minutes you don't get a better price i mean just just try that just try that on the playback of strategy tester put up a 15 minute chart and ask yourself would i buy here or would it be better to put a limit in 15 pips deep that lasts two hours? And just think about how that is a planned out trade that involves nothing but price, irregardless of any indicator. It's a logical trade. It's the right way to, for me, grid trade, I've seen grid traders that put in buy stops and sell stops and it actually starts to sell into a move, but I'm not talking about that kind of grid entry. I'm talking about certainly going against the current price pulse. If it's up, sell limits. Now, the sell stop, which, so I did this once, I said, I'm going to sell on limits and on stops. And actually, come to think of it, it was a great trade. You know why? Because if my limits didn't fill, my sell stops did. No market orders, though. And I felt like the sell stops were market orders because they're about as shitty as a price as you can get, too. But to make it so I had the tactical advantage of selling on limits, and this was a script that was... A sell stop that lasts for 15 minutes and a sell limit that lasts for 15 minutes. So imagine this technique where every hour I press a button and maybe the tick lasts for an hour. So in Asia, I put a sell stop in. I put in a, um, so it will look like this, uh, first hour sell stop, then sell limit and then this uh sell limit gets filled but the sell stop doesn't but there comes a point in time sell limits getting filled not quite a fill in the sell stop but here's where it becomes profitable because if we keep throwing sell limits of five pips apart for an hour we'll get filled on this rally and uh the sell stops last for an hour and then we start to get filled on our first sell stops and now we stop selling right we re re realize this is going up and your moving averages are going up and everybody's bullish and we know anything above here we want to start maybe start pressing that button or i had a script that i wrote which was all three techniques all three modes types of entry and here's where i think a qualifier would be if it's up big we're going to sell at the mark every hour it's up we sell at the market but when it's up big we have to sell with a wider stop and a wider take profit on that particular ticket still got sell limits in front and sell stops but everything sell and if that's true I, I suppose in, in a in a perfect world, when it's up big, your sell stop wouldn't change. 
because that's a trailing I want that to be a trailing step that gets annihilated and gets filled but the sell limits and the, the stops and the market orders would be uh, synced to the rate of change there so every hour it's a unique trade in a sense although the, the sell stop is your clunky um, like if markets going up I know I want to be a seller I could turn on a sell stop bot entry as soon as this thing so what turns it off that's the problem because you'd have to you'd wake up in the morning or some point here or you'd look at the platform and realize holy shit but some of this stuff's already auto cashed out <laughs> and on you could actually have that robot keep selling on stops right because you see how that profitable that would be but at some point it gets his head ripped off for at least 30 percent bounce from here and then here it just gets its ass kicked because these are not great this is a great sell-off so it's condition these trade plans are all conditional but psychologically um accepting that okay it's okay to sell on sell stops here but boy if i sold some on limits i think it's the market makes it complicated because then it's like well, how far did it really move if it moved up 30 pips let's sell with a wide stop on that but we can't sell twice as much because we're selling with a wide stop which means we're risking more on that trade but it's a big move it could be a good payoff so if, if you had robots running this then the um 15 pips up in one hour robots triggered here he sells he's triggered here he sells but he doesn't sell these wimpies but at the same time during this phase we're running our sell stops and our sell limits but the market is only engaged market orders are only engaged when you get a certain rate of change so here's a pretty considerable drop maybe it's triggered there maybe it's triggered there triggered there um triggered here big down right maybe got stopped out but maybe still holding out these are going to be more risky trades with a wider stop so you're buying into this buy limits are coming in front buy stops only because of the rate of change here is so severe well it's time to just flip it now you're going to go into for me i'm going to go into contrarian mode as soon as we take out this asian low or the congestion here <laughs> and also this is the premium entry because this wick matters that wick matters we never make it this low these limits would never fill but the robots still be throwing the sell limits out in front i'm sorry the buy limits out in front because right sees that in other words i'm in buy mode <laughs> even if i start buying here it's okay because my buy stops won't fill if they're more than one some might fill but i'm trading like tons of tickets 300 400 tickets 400k spread over one case but they're not always activated sometimes this is the 30k trade sure you'd love to put about i, I mean i can see clustering a bunch of trades a bunch of tickets you could put a 200k in there if you wanted and uh 100k without repeating uh, a price unbelievable and a 10 pip window without repeating the entry price so it's a fifth decimal broker but are you really going to do that and if you did where do you get out if it's break even like this if you everything here you buy and you start scaling out but you're totally flat by here you don't even realize this move so this pocket here well 
you know, you get buy stops running here. Now this is going to be one of those. Oh, well, I better put in a big wide stop on this buy because when you get in here, you're like you could just keep tanking, like it did here. I mean, this really picked up some speed. Now we're going up. I didn't sell here, so I'm not underwater because I was trading the euro at the time. And I looked over here and I thought, yeah, that's going to be uh, sell territory and coming into next week. And it could be screaming up. I'd have to look at the monthly and fix the scale and look, actually look into this thing. Let me, let me fix the scale so I can do the uh, proper... perspective it's hard to tell that's the hardest thing is where, where are we in a monthly chart so here is going back um, eh, a year and a half you just nicked the monthly wick so I sold into that now I wouldn't sell 500 standard lots here saying oh look at that that's the ultimate reversal because you know if it comes down to here if I'm up 20 pips I'm probably getting out, right? If I'm in uh, 100K, I just made $200 in like four hours coming into Asia, and there's still the whole week ahead of you. And of course, risking more. Um, maybe you sold a million dollars over the weekend you're holding and just hoping it gaps down. I mean, that's happened. I mean, it's an insane price. So in the in the big landscape of everything, to really make it real, how how ridiculous the how price doesn't matter. Here's the monthly, the weekly, the daily, four hour. So to me, the four hour lifestyle. I can see my trade when Sunday night the market opens. I'm just throwing sell limits up there and I just want to see what happens. I'm certainly not going to buy here. And I'd probably be short. I am short a little bit um, from the top of that. And of course, the market bot would have sold at the market with a very wide stop. But we could still drift up. We could definitely still. I don't think it's going to turn on a dime here. And that, you know, that, how that just never happens. Sometimes it does, and of course your brain amplifies that. Oh, yeah, that, oh, like, so that's another the big trick is your brain's always going to pick out, and you're always going to say, oh, I wish I would have stayed in that track. A few times I thought, no, you got out at the perfect time, and uh, that was about it. That's it. Let me take one last look at Bitcoin here. So I'm just kind of... I guess just uh, ranting along, but you know, um, really having this wide spectrum of tickets available is the solution for me because I don't see another approach. I'm not, I'm not going to build the Holy Grail. I'm never going to be able to. I just can't imagine, and I can't imagine trading too many markets either. <clears throat> Barely, barely trade the ones I trade because they're pretty, you know, when the news comes out. and So it's very long into the news today. And it was big news. And I thought, you know what? I saw it pull back just before, half hour before the news. And I go, that almost, I don't want to say guarantees, but that's like the pullback. Like they're cocking the gun. I mean, the people that are like, okay. We relax. We come back to the starting gate one more time. We start inching towards the border. Here comes the news. We spike up, and then we rip up, and then we choppy. But I'm still holding the swing trade because this will be a three-day trade, or at least, um, yeah, maybe get out Wednesday. And then um, I want to sell into this yen. So the other psychological difficulty is um, people say you should want what the market wants. Well, I mean, I guess I want to make money and hopefully <laughs> we're in the, 
the right wanting zone. So euro dollar is uh, is um, we're waiting. For, you know, news come out and uh, so all this all this uh, nonsense here. So we come underneath into the basement of this price. Final sell off. Like this really is the. So you take out the low of the previous day and just a measly 10 pip window. So I constantly have a basket of buy limits pending down here. And I bought a couple in the market, but most of the fills were really from that. Now here was the, um, the day before where. I thought, gosh, I should scalp more of this uh, kind of trade here where we get this nice 20 pip move. Bing, bang, bong. Um, but then this gave us the quietest day, really. Okay, here the news comes out, and uh, I'm sorry, here's the, here's the jobs report, which really doesn't do anything. And then when Asia comes, the old uh, Asian trap, so you get the small, uh, you know, apparently the jobs are born okay, but this is the non farm payroll. You know, Asia. And all the, so it just takes out these pressure tops like a zipper, right? Um, one last pullback, here comes the news. Uh, or the no, news comes out, we're pulling back here, and then. Yeah, so a big blast of 30 pips. I'm sorry, this is the... Like the sell-off um, European session there. But I'm, like, I'm already long. I'm long from these pullbacks. So every time this thing came back, I was buying this. So I, I loaded up on this part. And then I just kept buying. I mean, I'm pretty committed. No buy stops. All uh, a few buy at the markets, mostly limits, and then I did a partial cash cash out, and then here comes the news. Right, comes back, and then uh, kablamo. So it's one last pullback, and then and then here comes the news. And then I put some buy limits in again today and picked up some more. But it's different every time. I don't think it's consistently making money at a certain dollar amount, um, but at least I'm consistently putting in the tickets. I mean, I don't think there's a consistent income in these markets because you may just kill it or get killed, depending. And this was certainly the big, like when anything below here was psychotically obvious that I wanted to buy that so if I pull the trigger at the market here which I think I did because we were below here and I thought let's just start buying here I'll get in the market and the limits are here and here was a good scalp then we're just kind of still trapped under here we finally came to that point so definitely overshot by 10 pips well, I guess this is the real bottom the most recent bottom here's Asia so I think yeah I might weasel up here am I gonna stick around I don't know when we get to when we get to here I'm getting out because that's where the sellers start and actually if I was flat this I would put buy limits in because I feel like the euro dollars the spreads tight I know it's gonna be it may be 20% cost of doing business on the yen if the spread's two. And here it's 10%. So the tighter the spread, the less for the 12 pip and 14 pip targets, it matters. If you have a 300 pip, if you're swing trading and trying to make 100 pips, I don't think it matters because now, now your cost of doing business is 1%. 1% is pretty low compared to. So if I told you it costs 10%, but. At 10%, your probability of making money goes up. 
and I guess your probability of losing, um, well, of losing less money, because certainly the 300 pip stop is 30 bucks, and the three pip the uh, yeah, 30 pip stop is cheaper than 300 pip stop, and um, why why you wouldn't want to waste your time trying to build a holy grail because in this kind of system where you're just worried about inventory of tickets what you got out there what are your exposures are then it just becomes uh, an assessment of risk which is not very sexy at all it's not like a gartley pattern or anything like that so really in the end uh, trading is just plain old boring yeah i know there are some dramatic runs here and there's things but it's like how can we make money from some of this price movement so in my mind all the fluctuations are an opportunity i do think you got to look left on the chart because you may come up a five-year high and the market keeps going up but don't expect it to turn don't expect it to be a, a necessarily a ranging market at that time because it's on fire and 80% of the time it's ranging. So 20% of the time, if you trade the same uh, size, or if you trade even bigger or something, that's how you get, even though it's 20% of the time, it's really making a super insane move. If you're on that train, it's different, of course. Right? The trend traders are trying to board the train during the 80% consolidation and want to get a nice move um, because that is true that when the market consolidates it moves in the last direction known in the crudest form of a trend the last price pulse if it was up and we pause we'll fucking buy that's the simplest uh, trade plan in the world was the market up the last hour by 50 pips okay call me when it's only up 20 pips so we can buy i'm not even waiting for a pullback i'm actually going to buy weakness Now, that may be the only pullback on the one-hour chart, but on the 15-minute, you do have a pullback. So the time frame, more signals on the lower time frames, 15-minute chart pullback, okay, let's get in. Maybe you're on the, maybe you you want to be in that trade or you, just, you end up being in that trade for three and a half hours because you got in on a half-hour chart based on this big, fast sell-off in the half hour. You nailed it. You're in. That's, that's a hell of a, a pace to keep on execution. So you're execution uh abilities need to get better and tighter and maybe that's you know you're young and that's what you can handle but i'm old <laughs> i mean i just don't want to work that hard anymore i don't want to babysit with my finger on the trigger at the market looking at the tick chart with a smoke and a crack pipe uh, loading standard lots and thinking Okay, 80 bucks. Yeah, it's just, no. Let me take a nap and get filled on a limit grid and the thing retraces and I'm like, oh, I'm out of half the trade already. That's, I suppose, lazy. Instead of smart money, that's lazy money. But yeah, I understand the uh, the adrenaline of uh, trading live account. I guess the thrill is gone, as uh, <laughs> that guy said on guitar. You know, the guy down under. You know, you know, You know the thing. George Benson's. <laughs> but, uh, no, the BB uh, BB Benson, I think. <laughs> but that's, uh, it's neither here nor there. But it is th difficult because if you look at this chart, so there's a guy that's been commenting on the channel. And I know he's thinking, how in the fuck can I, I mean, like what i mean well, most people are thinking like just look at this chart here and just hmm can we build an algorithm for just even i'll even give you the option to optimize a trade plan or optimize an algorithm or a moving average that fits this chart perfectly there's no way because i can point to any even if you've tried to find the most ideal moving average crossover system just for this data set here there's going to be really bad trades in there if you take a completely well if it crosses over self it crosses over buy that's not going to work because if it did some guy would just 
MetaTrader comes with a moving average crossover system. If you custom fit that, you back test it, you're still going to see dips in your equity, even though maybe you did cherry pick and found the best moving average for that market on the best time frame, and it's a fucking amazing trend. It crossed over once, it kept buying into it, and you got it optimized, the settings, I'm ready to go, and I did it. I did it. I did it in 1988 um, or something like that. I said, I'm going to build me a robot, and I'll tell you what, it was fun, but it, I thought, well, that's kind of like the exciting frontier of, like, can this thing do it? No, it can't. And it, it, at least I, I, I um, cured myself of this idea of a, a singular bot. But I do believe in a team of bots. So if I assign five EAs, that are limit entry EAs that are uh, standing on duty to just trade the euro. And we have the complexity of different expirations that I wouldn't bother dropping a 15 minute uh, script or a half hour script because I got to get fucking redrop it. See, but a 15 minute robot front running the market by a half hour, one hour is going to capture a trade brace based on a time criteria. That is the, the chore of a robot. That's when a robot, works so i do think a team of bots but in the end i'm probably just gonna trade it my i'm probably just gonna either i'll probably hand place orders big grids i could put 100k in in about five minutes in less time that i can load 100k limits in less time than a then I could pick out the right robot to do that for me. But I think I know the 15 minute and a half hour expiration tickets, they could work in the background on that robot, but I'd probably, hmm, I think I could do that. So say every, every hour it drops a one hour rack of tickets. But I really only want to use, utilize that when I'm not, babysit in the market because i will drop a four hour script if i'm there in front of the screen i like the four hour time frame i figure well if this thing could drop 50 pips in four hours and they fill that that's going to be an amazing trade because i set up a almost an un you know if I, if I hand drop this i don't have to rewrite the script either if i hand drop it 80 pips deep and it lasts for five for 15 minutes this is as short as you can go I can almost guarantee you it ain't going to fill. In fact, I can prove it. I can, I can I have a ticket launch system that launch that same scheme. And you can test it on, and I did it. I tested on multiple currency pairs. If the expiration time is um, too short and the markets are too the tickets are too deep price-wise in the market, it ain't going to fill. The Goldilocks, the sweet spot, is to get the tickets close enough to the market with the expirations to get the optimal fills across maybe half the tickets you dropped, I suppose. Um, ideally, of course, they fill every ticket without stopping out one. All trade plans work. Never stopped out of a trade. Just, it's just impossible. It's okay to have a tight stop taken out. So diversity is the key in one market. So instead of diversifying and, oh, I got an algorithm I built, so let's go trade 20 currencies, I'm diversifying. Well, not really because you see an algorithm against 20 markets. You're diversifying instruments, but I'd rather diversify on one instrument. So now I only got one thing to worry about. And I can another level of diversification is to use the robot in conjunction with yourself. So it's taking care of maybe thirty percent of the trades, you know, and and then maybe down the road you get better at running a robot because that's it's easier to make it analog. It's easier to do stuff manually because these robots. There was a, 
I mean, this is the typical scheme for these robots they used to sell years ago, you know. Is they would tell you every month, and I think that's why they would sell it by the month, because they'd like, you know, we've got to tune your robot up. Yeah, because the volatility has gotten so fucking out of control that they've got to adjust these robots. But there's a lag, right? And then how often are you going to get like, well, the other versions seem to be, and are you really going to, you're forward testing everything at that point. It's $90 robot. You know. Anyways. It is the dream that the robot's going to do what, you know, you don't, it takes the emotion out. I don't know. I mean, I just, I'd, well, I'd be pissed at the robot. <laughs> I'd find something else to get mad about. I'm just angry waiting for a place to happen, god damn it. Anyways, I gotta get a bite to eat, so that's that's all I gotta that's that's all I'm thinking at the moment. But you no, know, that's just scatterbrain, but I have no other way. I'm I'm not gonna write a book. I'm not gonna I don't have to organize these thoughts too much more than I just did, so Yeah. But if I come up with another bad idea, I'll let you know.